In October 2018, I took a trip to Japan, and while I was there, I visited the Cardcaptor Sakura exhibition in Tokyo. Today, I'm going to share a little bit of my experience with you. I'm Cece Yamato, let's get started. I started off my day bright and early to get to Roppongi, about a mile west of the Tokyo Tower. Specifically, I was heading to the Mori Art Center. Fortunately, it's a quick train ride over from where I was staying in Shinagawa, and before long, I'm riding up the escalator to the real destination, Mori Tower. The exhibit is at the top, so to get there we have to go over to the main entrance, this weird cone-shaped building. So up a few stairs and into the main entryway. Once inside, you can either buy your tickets there or you can use your pre-bought tickets that were available in September. I don't know if this is common in Japan, but even though I had a weekday ticket and it was a weekday, because it was the opening day, that counted as a special day and therefore the standard weekday ticket didn't work. Of course, that didn't stop me, I just used that ticket again on Monday. After you take an elevator up to the 52nd floor, it's finally time to start the exhibit. If you get the audio tour, you get a speaker to carry around your neck and you dial in the locations as you go. Unfortunately, they're only available in Japanese. Yep, I was bad. I recorded the whole thing. Okay, so now let's move on to the exhibit itself. To start, we enter a room full of giant books. No doubt you've seen pictures of these online by now, but the pictures don't quite do it justice as to just how big these are. Inside these six books, there's a bunch of little factoids, like a bit of history and some statistics. This is where the crowds will cluster the most, as it's right at the start and there's a lot to read. Next, you'll go into a room with a short video presentation by Kiro, who explains the theme of the museum. Basically, Sakura has released a bunch of the cards into the room, so all of the following rooms follow a theme based on one of the cards. The first room we visit is Flower. In this big room, guests are able to put stickers all over the walls. Actually, not just the walls, the floor is equally viable. I added one each time I was here, but I didn't add to this massive heart that people started making around this one piece. Speaking of multiple visits, here's the room on Friday when it was still relatively new, but here it is again on Monday and it's obviously gotten a lot more covered. I can't imagine what it looks like now. Next up is one of the more amazing rooms, Tomoyo Studio, or the Siege Room. In here we have four of Sakura's famous costumes brought to life in amazingly high quality and detail. And along the walls are just a big assortment of fabrics, half-completed outfits, and curtains. Oh yeah, this is also the room where they finally told me to stop breaking the rules and videotaping everything. I'm sure I would have known not to do that if I'd paid attention to the sign out front. Or cared. But that's okay, because in the next section, Maze, you're not allowed to have your camera out anyway, because this is the art part of the art exhibit. Inside, you'll find first and foremost the original artworks that became the cover arts of the current manga, as in the authentic pen and ink pictures, not prints. It's really cool, but what's more cool is the other half of the exhibit, which is several dozen of the original production pages of manga, both from the original 90s series and the clear cards. I love seeing the production side of things. These original pictures come complete with the whiteout, the redrawn lines, some post-production changes to the frames, and perhaps most hilariously, flowers cut out with a stencil and glued in place. Because yes, back in the day before computers could add that stuff for you, you just glued it onto the page and they cleaned it up for you when they went to printing. And now back to the part where I could take pictures, the Nakayoshi Room, which as far as I'm concerned is the most important room for me and the Cardcaptor Museum. In this room, along with all the manga out on the tables for people to read, there is a row of display cases showing several of Sakura's cover arts on Nakayoshi, and under them are the Sakura-specific Furoka that came with those issues. And that is great for me, because I finally get to know what this is! I have three of this thing, and now I finally know it's a Nakayoshi gift, which means it's immediately more valuable to me. There's also this big timeline of Sakura's publication history, which is good for research, but to be honest, I basically had all this information. But it shows, I think, all the issues that Sakura featured on, so that's a plus. Now the last room is a two-parter. The first part is the giant Kiro plushie you've no doubt seen because they've been using it in all the advertising. You can take pictures with it, touch it, hug it, all sorts of things. You probably can't climb on it, but the staff was nice enough to hold the camera for me so that I could get a picture of me that wasn't just a selfie. And now we come to the last section, 52 cloud cards and their equivalent Sakura cards set up in a neat display. And along the back of this exhibit are the clear cards, but curiously, only the manga ones. You'll notice that earlier I said 52 when I was talking about the number of cards that are on the wall. That was intentional, because nothing and hope are absent from these walls. 
This is a really weird breakdown between the anime and the manga because they're acknowledging that the 52 card deck exists, including the three cards that were never in the anime at all, but you're ignoring the movie only cards and the anime only cards from the clear cards. And the last thing that's in this room is a brand new clear card, the thank you card. There's a big glass version of it at the end of the exhibit, and just like a clear card, it's clear but double-sided. And when you leave the exhibit, you get a bookmark of this card. But don't think the exhibit is over just because you left. Oh no, because there's still the gift shop with all the exhibition limited merchandise. There's also a special wall of the entries to the Sakura costume contest that I was too busy to participate in. If someone had told me, or maybe I'd remembered, that these entries would go in the museum, I would have made some more time. Also in here, the big winner had their costume made for real, so congrats to them. And now we're done with the exhibit. We've bought all our stuff, grabbed a bunch of posters and promo stuff, and we get a chance to look over Tokyo from the top of the Mori Tower. If you like, you can also stop at the Sakura Cafe, and if you're doing the stamp rally, you can go downstairs and buy something to finish your rally and get a sticker. So that's my experience with the Cardcaptor Sakura exhibit in Tokyo. For the record, I didn't go just for this, but it did decide when I was going. But late October was a really nice and comfortable time to go weather-wise, so if I go to Japan, I'm definitely picking this season again. So thanks everyone for watching. I know this video can never compare to the real thing, but it beats dropping a grand to fly to Tokyo and seeing it yourself if that's not a reasonable option. The exhibit is running from the end of October to January, but in December, some of the stuff is going to change. Namely, they're going to give you new bookmarks, and the audio guide, which is currently narrated by Kiro, will now be narrated by Yue. I won't be going back to experience it myself, sadly. In fact, if I could redo this trip at all, I'd probably aim for it to be around the dates of the switch over. But hey, if you're going to be in Japan from now until January 2019, I'd definitely make some time to go and check out this exhibit. A standard ticket's only 1800 yen, and the audio tour is 3400 yen and some change. Like I said, if you're already going to be in Japan, it's not that much of an expense. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, follow me on Twitter and Tumblr for updates. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button so that when I upload part two of this, a weeb week in Tokyo, you won't miss it. And also when I upload more Sakura stuff, because that's what I do here. I, this is a Sakura channel. See you next time. Oh yeah, one more thing, if you do manage to get there, check out the Lawson shop on the nearby Main Street. Lawson's are a common convenience store in Japan, and the one in Roppongi has a special tie-in merchandise for the exhibit. Wasn't really my thing, it was just pillows and tins of tea, but hey, if you're gonna be there, at least check it out.